So it's Black History Month, and today we have the great honor of having Olive Senior, who is the Poet Laureate of Jamaica, joining us uh, to read one of her books. Olive, it's a real pleasure to have you here. Thank you, Chris. It's my pleasure to be yeah. here. And the, and the book you're going to be reading is called Bununu's Hair. Uh -huh. And can you just, just as a start, what does Bununu's mean? <laughs> okay. And the first thing is a pronunciation, okay. which is Bununu's. <laughs> Bununu's. Okay. Bunununus. And it, it's just a Jamaican word, which means lovely, beautiful, and it was popularized by Louise Bennett. Um, mm -hmm. And so a lot of people would be at least familiar with the word if they don't know the meaning. Okay, so, so the title of my book is Bununonos Hair. Bununonos. Okay, <laughs> okay, fantastic. So let's let's have the reading of the book, and then I'm going to ask you some questions about it. So go ahead. Okay, and I have to say the book, the illustrations are by Laura James, who is a, a, a just, I mean, she just brought this book to life, as you will see. Oh, yeah, no, the illustrations are fantastic. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> Bununununu's hair. Time to plait Jamila's hair, but the comb has vanished into thin air. It's up in the ceiling, Jamila shouts, the elephant's hiding it in its trunk. Oh, really? Last time it was a camel's hump, the kangaroo's pouch, the toucan's beak, the mouse's squeak. No, Missy, no more playing. Spin around and let's get breeding. Aha, and look where the comb's been hiding. Whoa, Jamila cries. Oh, come now, Jamila. This is no time to pout. You'll be late for school unless I comb it out. Close your eyes. Count to 10. I'll be done with this plait by then. Oh, I hate my hair. It hurts. It's a pain. Oh, do stop making such a fuss. Why do you hate your hair so much? Because it's bad, bad, bad. It makes me so mad, mad, mad. Why can't I have good hair like the girls in my class? Sasha, Sarah, Brittany, Claire. Oh, really? What's so good about their hair? They have hair that's long and soft and pretty. It glows as it flows, without plaits, without pins, long or short. It can swish as they wish. Oh, Jamila, you silly. Why want their hair when the most fantabulous, splendiferous, bonononous hair in the world is right hair? Really? And truly, you'll see, your hair is electric, kinetic, and free. While your friend's hair always looks the same, you have hair that can frame your face or whiz off into the stratosphere. Hair that can say something different every day of the week, every month of the year. Want to try? Oh, yes. A different head of hair every day of the year. Well, let's start with this week. So I can have puffs on Monday, plaits on Tuesday, braids on Wednesday, cornrows Thursday, twist out Friday, and yes, and on Saturday, hair can be wild, but on Sunday, you must be grandmother's child. But guess what? No more hiding the comb. No more crying. Agree? Uh-huh. Bonononus and bonononus you. For the first day of school, here's your new do. Now, promise Jamila. No hide in the comb, no getting in a tizzy. Sometimes mom might be busy, so ask big sister Lizzie. Because she's been there with her electric, kinetic, bombastic, fantastic, twirly, whirly, curly, fuzzy, snappy, nappy, wavy, crazy, bonononus hair. <laughs> That's absolutely wonderful. That's really wonderful. Thank you for, for this. So let me ask you a couple of questions about this book. Uh -huh. What prompted you to, to write this book? 
Well, you know, um, black hair is not just about hair. It, it is laden with symbolism and black is beautiful and so on. But also in Jamaica with the rise of Rastafari, um, Rastafarians were the first to say, hey, I'm gonna grow my hair natural. Um, so, you know, it's, as I say, hair is fraught with symbolism, even today, but things are much easier because if you follow social media and so on, you will see that um, Black people are now taking pride in their hair and pride in the fact that you can do so much with Black hair mm -hmm. and, and people are just flaunting it, doing what they want with it. Um, but I, I, I wrote this book because it's still very problematic for children. Because you, if you're a girl, you don't have your hair styled like a big person's until you're older. So children are just are still subjected to the combing ritual, which is painful usually. Oh. And, and it's, you know, there's always a big fight going on with the child and the mother with the hair combing. So I wrote this book because, first of all, I wanted to say, hey, your hair is beautiful, no matter what it is you're beautiful and to sort of build self-esteem really mm -hmm. in children. Yeah. And, and actually a lot of black literature has dealt with this, you know, this, this idea that when you get together to do each other's hair, it's, it's part of a whole ritual of bonding and sharing and so on. And they go into the hairdresser is part of that ritual. And let me just say too, that the black barbershop has played a, a historic role in this as well as a place where men come together, mm -hmm. not just the bond, but it was the place where you exchange information about politics, about international affairs and so on. So the barbershop has also played that role. So yeah, this is, as I say, it's more than hair. It's, it's, it's part of a whole culture. Um, mm -hmm. And so I, I've, I'm glad we, kind of, because it's so important that like black hair is so important, I'm glad we've kind of chosen this book for Black History Month. I love all of your books, Thank um, you. you know, and we, we did a, an interview before about Gardening in the Tropics, which is one of my all time favorites. So it's just such a fantastic book of poetry. Um, and this one, you've written some other children's books as well. Yes, I have two others. The first one is called Birthday Suit, which mm -hmm. is about a little boy who doesn't want to wear clothes. Okay. And of course, <laughs> you know, he, he has to be taught that putting on wearing clothes is part of growing up. Mm -hmm. So there's that. And then um, I did another book with um, this publisher, Tradewind, and, and with Laura James, the illustrator, which is okay. called Anna Carries Water, which is about um, a little girl who wants to be like her big brothers and sisters and carry water on her head. Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, I wanted to show that in poor countries, water doesn't come out of a tap. What you go to the water, the water doesn't come to you. And quite often the task of bringing water for the family is, is falls on the children. It's what kids do before they go to school, when they, you know, after school and so on. So I wanted to show a, children contributing to family labor, but also that is not demeaning. It's again, it's part of growing up. It's part of becoming like your older brothers and sisters to be able to balance water on your head, you know? So that's, that's the other one. Nice. And you are the poet laureate for Jamaica. Tell yes. me about that. How did you, how did you find out about this honor? <laughs> well, I was asked, um, I think, I think there's a process where people are nominated and, um, and I was contacted and said, well, you're the first choice, are you interested? And to be honest, it's not something I'd ever thought about. Um, but, you know, in thinking about it, I, I thought, yeah, it's a great honor. And also I feel I can make a contribution as Poet Laureate. So yeah, so I'm Poet Laureate for three years. Um, I have two more years. What does it entail? Well, this is it. Um, each poet laureate is free. You're, you're free to develop your own program and decide what you want to do. So I have two main platforms for my program. One is I want to establish a poetry archive of Jamaican poets reading their work. So you can tune in anywhere in the world and hear Jamaican poets reading. That's on its way. We're about to launch our first contributors. And that will be launched on International Poetry Day in March. Um, so I can't say who the people are, but you know, we'll have a big reveal of the first set. 
which includes some Canadians, by the way, um, mm -hmm. some people based in Canada. And um, my second um, platform is to use poetry to um, raise consciousness about the environment. And so I'm hoping for the next two years to have, um, you know, us having workshops, competitions, and so on with people writing about poetry that address the environment. And I want to bring the environment to home, down to home. So the theme is I see my land because we, we all think of the environment in broad, huge terms, which makes it very difficult to deal with. But I wanna to say to people, the environment is your backyard. It's where you are, it's where you live. Look around you and let's talk about that in terms of the environment. So those are my two major platforms. Fantastic. Well, that's really, really wonderful. It sounds like you're doing some great work with this, this honor of being the Poet Laureate of Jamaica. And all of it's always a pleasure to chat with you. Um, and thank you so much for sharing Banuna Nunu's hair with us. And I don't know if I'm saying that right yet, but we'll have uh, lessons. <laughs> it's a fun, it's a fun word and it's a fun yeah. book. So thank you yes. so much for sharing us and being with us here in Black History Month. Thank you, Chris. Uh, it's a great honor and I know how busy you are. So thank you for inviting me and oh. I hope we'll all have a great Black History Month. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.